today's topic, we're going to be going over a couple of things that brothers have asked. So I'm going to be touching on those things. All right. Um, uh, give me the book of Leviticus chapter 16. We're going to start there. Leviticus 16 verse 1. Leviticus chapter 16 verses 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron when they offered before the Lord and died. So now this is talking about uh, Nadab and Abahu because they offered things that were not allowed by the Most High God, but they did it anyway. So they went against the order. Okay, read that again. The book of Leviticus chapter 16 verses 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron when they offered before the Lord and died. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus. Give me Leviticus 10. Give me Leviticus 10 verse 1. Because they offered strange incense upon the, upon the altar of their incense and they died. The Lord consumed them with fire. Okay. Leviticus 10 verse 1. The book of Leviticus, chapter 10, verses 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them, took either of them his censer mm -hmm. and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. So the most high God didn't command them to offer strange fire. Because they said that the fire that they offered, the, the fire that they offered came with the incense. So they were not burning the right incense. So that's why it's called strange fire, because that is what not that is not what the law commanded them to. Okay, read that again, verse one. The book of Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them, his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. Pray. And they went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. They died before the Most High God because the Lord killed them. Give me that in Exodus 30, verse 7. Exodus chapter 30, and verse 7. The book of Exodus chapter 30, verse 7. And Aaron shall burn they're on sweet incense every morning. When he dressed the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. So now this is um, Aaron for him to do and his son also to follow after his footsteps. Read that again, verse 7. The book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 7. And Aaron shall burn their own sweet incense every morning. When he dress, when he dressed the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. Read. And when Aaron lighted the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. So now, the Most High God gave specific instructions on how this must be done. So it wasn't just any incense that was given. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. Let's start at the... Let's start at verse 1. Revelation 8, verse 1. The book of Revelations, chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Come on. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Come on. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. So now, even the even the angels they understood the angels know the right censer, the right censer, the incense that they must use. You understand for the what for the prayers of all the saints. That's why he has said he had a golden censer and has given unto him much incense that he could offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Come on. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints 
ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. You see that thing? Because the Lord did what? The Lord accepted those prayers mixed with that incense because that is what? That is the sweet smelling favor that the Lord is looking for. Watch this. Give it the book of Matthew. Okay. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. Let's start at verse. Let's start at verse 11. Matthew 2, verse 11. The book of Matthew, so 2, verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. You see that thing? Gold and frankincense and myrrh. Because that is the sweet smelling flavor that the Lord was looking for. So obviously, Nadia ben Abahu did not offer this type of incense. They didn't bring frankincense, they didn't bring myrrh, because which is, that's what the Lord is looking for. That's why when the angels did it, Raphael, which is Raphael in Revelation 8, verse 1 to 4, he's talking about him. He brought the prayers of the saints, you understand? And the prayers were mixed with the smoke of the burning incense of frankincense and myrrh that was presented before the Most High God. Okay? Go back to where he was at. Um, Exodus chapter 30 and verse 8. The book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 8. Read. And when Aaron lighted the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. Forever. Come on. He shall offer no strange incense thereon. That's why Nereb and Abahu were put to death because they offered strange incense on the, at the altar of Ben incense. Read on. Ye shall offer no strange incense thereon, no burnt offering. Ye shall offer no strange incense thereon, no burnt sacrifice, no meat offering. Neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. So now what we're reading here is what? This is going into the altar of incense. How it, how it needed to be done, specific detailed instructions on how this needs to be carried out. And they did not follow the instructions. Okay, watch this. Go back to Leviticus chapter 16, verse 1 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 16, verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto me after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they had offered before the Lord and died. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he died not, for I will appear in a cloud upon the mercy seat. So now this what is going into, this is going into the day of atonement, because this chapter goes into the day of atonement. But the things that happened before that, in leading up to the day of the things that needed to be done, how Aaron needed to conduct himself, the things that in the deeds of the law he needed to perform as part of the day of atonement. Read verse 2 again. The book of Leviticus, 16, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. So now the Lord told Moses to speak to Aaron, listen, don't come, don't come into the, don't come into the holy place, which is what? The holies of all. Because you have the outer court, you have the inner court, you have the holies of all. In the holies of all, you have the Ark of the Covenant with the two, two cherubim sitting on top of it, facing opposite, facing one another. And on the center of it, you have the mercy seat. That's where the message it was. So Moses is telling Aaron at the command of the Most High, Aaron must not come into the into the veil, beyond the veil, at all the all the times. Why? Give me the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 6. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 6. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. Read that again, verse 6. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 6. Now when these things were thus ordained, 
the priests went always into the first tabernacle. They did what? Accomplishing. Went always into the first tabernacle. So the priests always went into the first tabernacle, meaning all the time. Their service, their, their, their daily services was into the first tabernacle. You understand? Accomplishing the service of God. The Levitical priesthood order. That is why he's saying what he's saying. Here, always into the first tabernacle. Come on. The priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So now the second, the second tabernacle, that's the holy of all. The priest, the high priest went, he went in there by himself once a year, okay, in September. In the, on the seventh month of the year, he went in there once a year, not without blood. Why? Because it was the day of atonement, where all Israel needed to be atoned for their sins. Not just for all Israel, but for the priest and his house and for all twelve. Okay? Which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Because the, 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 the high priest, they also, they said, okay, there was not without fault. That's why they had to offer for themselves and for the errors of the people. Okay, go back to where was that? Leviticus 16 verse 2. The book of Leviticus chapter 16 verse 2. And the Lord said to Moses, speak unto Aaron, thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat. Okay, so which is a it says, and the Lord said unto Moses, speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times. Read that right. Read that two again. The book of Leviticus 16, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat. Come on. Which is above the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. So the Lord says he will, is going to be the meaning a chariot is going to appear, okay, upon the mercy seat, meaning what? On top of the tabernacle. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You know, the three. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place, with a young bullock for a sin offering, the ram for a burnt offering. So now you remember what we read in Hebrews nine verse six through seven. Um, he said, "Listen, the priest he is going to offer for himself to atone for himself and for the errors of the people." So what we are seeing here, this is going into what Aaron. Aaron sacrificed for his sins and for his household. You understand? Read that again, verse 3. The book of Leviticus, 16, verse 6. No, verse 3. And Aaron shall offer the book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 3. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. So now this sin offering was a burnt offering. Jump down to verse 6 now. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, mm -hmm. and make an atonement for himself and for his house. You see that thing? So verse 3 is explained why, why, why he's needing the young bullock and the ram for a sin offering and a burnt offering, respectively. He's explained in verse, verse 6. Read verse 6 again. The book of Leviticus 16, verse 6. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself and make an atonement for himself and for his house. So he will do it for himself and his household. You understand? That is the offering that he's talking about in verse 3. Give me Leviticus chapter 4 now. That's one. Leviticus 4 verse 1. Let's get some details about that. Leviticus 4 verse 1. The book of Leviticus chapter 4 verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Read. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do 
against any of them. You see that thing? Because there were things that were sent through ignorance and things that were willful. That's why he needed to what? Offer sacrifices for himself so that he can what? Receive the atonement for himself and for his house and then for all 12 tribes of it. Read. If the priest that is anointed to sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin which he hath sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. That's what we read in Leviticus 15, verse 3. A young bullock. You see that part? A young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. Next verse. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Read. And shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. So now Leviticus chapter 4, it gives you the details on how this was done. You understand? This of this sin offering right here, of the young bullock. He tells you what you must do even with the gut and all that. He tells you, gives you details. You can read the whole, the rest, the rest of the, you can read the rest on your own. It goes into the two kidneys and the fat which is upon them, so on and so forth. You can read that on your own. But the point I wanted to make sure is also that I bring out, it says, a young bullock without blemish, without blemish. So we we there was a there was a there was a technique that we used to make sure that this bullock that is going to be used for sacrifice is without blemish. And this is what we did to maintain that. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12 and verse read verse 3. Exodus 12 verse 3. The book of Exodus. Chapter 12, verses 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. So on the tenth day, you must prepare a lamb on the tenth day. Come on. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next, uh, let him and his neighbor next, Next unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall shall your count for the lamb. Okay. It says, every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Come on. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Come on. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep. Or from the goats. You see that thing? So how we make sure that it was without blemish because we took it from the kid or from the lamb or if from the sheep. It was a goat or a lamb. So it was part of the what the flock. Now it's also the, the, the bullock, it goes into what the herd. If you read the because what goes into the band offering. So for us to make sure that it was without blemish and without spot, we have to separate the lamb or the bullock or the goat from the rest of the goats or from the rest of the sheep so that it be by itself. Okay? So that's why here in Leviticus, in Exodus 12, the reason why we have to separate it also, not only was it so that, um, it, because they always, they, always, uh, they always fight and all of that, so that it's without blemish. So that's why you have to separate it by, by itself and it's not going to be eating or drinking as well so that it, 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 its system can be cleansed. Okay, so that when it's time for us to eat the meat, the meat is on top notch. So that's why the Lord made sure that it was without blemish and without spot. Okay, go back to Leviticus now. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 3 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verses 3. Mm -hmm. Thus shall Aaron come into the... Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Come down to verse 6. And Aaron shall offer his bullock for a sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. You see that thing? He will make an atonement for himself and for his house. Jump back up to verse 3. Was he dealing with what? The, the bullock, that uh, the young bullock, and the ram for a burnt offering that Aaron will make for himself and for the atonement for, for his house. Read verse 3 again now. The book of Leviticus 16 verse 3. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place 
with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Okay, jump down to verse 11 now. Watch this. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. You see that part? And it says, Aaron shall bring the bullock for the sin offering, which is for himself. Come on. And shall make an atonement for himself right? and for his house. Uh -huh. And shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. Right? And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord. And his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Within the veil, meaning in the holies of all. Come on. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat mm -hmm. that is upon the testimony that he die not. Come on. And he shall take off the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle off the blood with his finger seven times. So now what we just read is the, the, the sin offering that Aaron had to do for himself and for his household. That is what we just went over. Leviticus 16 verse 3, Leviticus 16 verse, verse 6, 11 through 14. It goes into Aaron and his house. The atonement that he had to make for himself and for his household. Watch this. Jump back up to verse 4 now. Leviticus 16 verse 4. The book of Leviticus 16 verse 4. He shall put on the holy linen coat. And he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh. And shall be girded with a linen girdle. Really? And with the linen... My tree, me tree, me tree, me tree, and with the linen me tree shall he be attired. Come on, these are holy garments. Therefore, shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. Because these garments that he was, he, he put them on. This was what when he went to this is what this is the garments that he need to wear on the day of atonement, okay, to represent all 12 tribes. Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 18. Wisdom of Solomon 18 verse 24. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18 verses 24. Come on. For in the long garment was the whole world. Was the whole world. In the long garment, the garment we just read about in Leviticus 16 verse 4. Come on. And in the four rows of the stones. Read the verse again the from the top. Read the verse again from the top. In the Solomon chapter 18, verse 24. For in the long garment was the whole world. And in the four rows of the stones was the glory of the father's graven. You see that thing? In the four rows of the stones was the glory of the father's graven. Come on. And thy majesty upon the diadem of his head. Because guess what? He put a mitri, and upon the mitri, he put a diadem on his head, on the mitri. Okay, so what so King Solomon is explaining here is what we just read in Leviticus 16, verse 4. Okay, go back to Leviticus 16, verse 4. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 4. He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and shall be girded with a linen girdle and with the linen mitri shall he be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore, shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. Come on. And he shall take off the congregation of the children of Israel, two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. So now verse five, it goes into what? The children of Israel now. Read verse five again. The book of Leviticus 16 verse 5. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Jump down to verse 7. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So the same goat we read in verse 5 now He's going to take those two goats and present them before the Lord 
at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Read on. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. He shall cast lots. One. When, like you are playing dice, you will cast lots upon the two goats. Okay, come on. One lot for the Lord mm -hmm. and the other lot for the scapegoat. So now one lot will be for the Lord and the other one will be for the scapegoat. Because one lot will be for one lot will be for the most high to for a sin offering, and the other one will be for the scapegoat to take all the sins of Israel. See? And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. You see that part? And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. Okay, for atonement. All right, because blood needed to be spared. That's why this particular goat right here is going to be offered for a sin offering. It's going to be killed so blood can what? So the Aaron can use the blood and sprinkle it in the holy place. Right? But the goat on which the Lord fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord. Right. To make an, to make an atonement with him and to let, to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Okay, don't be emphasizing things. Just read. Just read properly. Read verse 10 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 16 verse 10. But the scapegoat on which the Lord fell to be this, but the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. So now you've got two goats that we read about in verse 7. Okay, these two goats, one will be for the Lord, the other one will be for the scapegoat. Watch this, jump down to verse 15 now. Leviticus 16, verse 15. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 15. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil mm -hmm. and do with that and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So he says the same thing that he did for, for himself and for his household he's going to do for Israel, but he's going to use a goat for the sin offering which the Lord's Lord fell upon. Okay, so he says, as the blood, he says, that blood as he did with the bullock of the, of the, the blood of the bullock and bring it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So he's going to do the same, the same thing he did for, for himself and for his household, he's going to do for all 12. Read on. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel uh -huh. and because of their transgressions in all their sins. Mm -hmm. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of the uncleanness. Okay, hold this, go back to Hebrews chapter nine, verse six again. The book of Hebrews chapter nine, verse six. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of God. That's what we just read, come on. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, what did which he, say? he offered him. But into the second went uh -huh. the high priest alone once every year. Come on. Not without blood. Not without blood, not without blood. That's why there was a what? There was a there was a there was a goat that was going to be used for the sin offering where the Lord's Lord fell. That's why it says not without blood. That is the what we just read in Leviticus 16, verse 15 and 16. Not without blood. That's why the apostle Paul is saying what he's saying there, because he's what he's rehashing what we just what we just read in Leviticus 16. So go back there, Leviticus 16, verse 16 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16. Verses 15, then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people mm -hmm. and bring his blood within the veil okay. and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. Okay. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of the transgressions in all their sins. And so 
shall he and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of the uncleanness. Wait. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out Wait. and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. You see that thing? Because for himself and for his household, he did it with a bullock. Okay, now he's using a goat for the what? For all 12. When he goes in for all 12, he's also going to do for himself, for his household, and for the whole nation of Israel. Read on. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord, and make an atonement for it, and shall take off the blood of the bullock, and of the blood of the goat, and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. Come on. And he shall sprinkle off the blood upon it with his fingers, with his finger seven times, and cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. So now this is what this now goes into what for all 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, so he did for himself, for his household, and for all 12. But the first thing that he did here to do it for himself and for his household. Then he came in again for himself, for the nation of Israel, and for himself. For his household and for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's why he had to walk to wear that long garment. You understand? To represent all 12 tribes of Israel. Now, let's go back to Leviticus chapter 16. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 8. The book of Leviticus chapter 16, verse 8. And Aaron shall cast lost upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other. And the other lot for the scapegoat. And the other lot for the what? Scapegoat. And for the other lot for the scapegoat. Jump down to the tenor. But the goat on which the lot fell to be, to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord. To make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. So you see that thing? And to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. We dealt with the with the goat that the Lord's Lord fell, which was for all Israel. Okay, now we're gonna deal with the scapegoat. Give me Leviticus 16, verse 20. The book of Leviticus of the 16, verses 20. Come on. And when he had made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. He shall what? Bring. The live goat. He shall bring the live goat because now he's done with the other goat that the Lord lost there. Now he's dealing with the scapegoat, which was kept alive. Come on. And yes. Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. This fit man is literally, yes, he had to be fit to carry the goat. Read that part again, verse 21. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 21. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all the transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Come on. And the goats shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited. And he shall let go the goat in the, in, in the wilderness. Read verse 22 again. Leviticus chapter 16 verse 22. And the goats shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited. Mm -hmm. And he shall let go the goat into the wilderness. Watch this. Jump up. Read the verse about it. Read verse 21. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 21. Come on. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Watch this. Um, you see that part when it says, and all their transgression 
in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah. Give me Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse. Let's start at verse 3. Isaiah 53, verse 3. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Meaning what? When he says a man of sorrows, because Israel made him sick. Okay, he says we esteemed him not because the builders rejected him. Come on. Surely. He has borne our griefs. He has done what? And carried our sorrows. Surely he has borne our griefs. He has borne our griefs. To borne, to borne means to carry. Surely he has borne our griefs. The same thing that happened to the what? To the live goat. He has borne our griefs. Come on. And carried our sorrows. He carried our sorrows. Come on. Just like the goat. Yet. Yet. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Come on. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Now Isaiah comes back in verse 4 because the nations were saying the reason why he's going, our people, our forefathers and foremothers, they were saying, no, the reason why he's going through this is because he was wicked. No, no. Isaiah comes back, he tells you, the reason why he's going through this is because of you wicked Israelites. Read verse 5 again. The book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Come on. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was what? Wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgression. He got he got what he got because of us. Come on. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was crucified for our iniquities, for our sins. Wait. The chastement of our peace. No, no. Was the upon chastisement, him. the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So that's exactly what Isaiah is teaching us here. Isaiah is correcting Israel. He's checking us. Because our forefathers were saying, no, the reason why he's going through this is because he was wicked. Mm -mm. Isaiah is letting you know what he, what, why he's going through this. Because of our sin. Okay? Because of our sin. Watch this. Jump down to verse 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter so 53, verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Come on. Yeah. Put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. You see that thing? When he, thou shalt when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, an offering for sin, an offering for sin. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Come on. He shall see his seed. Uh -huh. He shall pro prolong his days. He shall prolong his days. Come on. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Come on. He shall see the travail, the travail of his soul. Wait. Right? And shall be satisfied. Meaning the most high God was satisfied with the sin that Christ did. Come on. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. He will justify many of many, many what? All 12 tribes of Israel. You see that thing? It says, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant, singular, Shall my righteous servant justify me, all 12 tribes of Israel? Come on. For he shall bear their iniquities. He shall bear their iniquities. That's exactly what happened to that light goat. Go back to Leviticus chapter 16, verse 21. Again. The book of Leviticus chapter 16, verses 21. And Aaron shall lay both his hand upon the head of the live goat, and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. He says, shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Meaning what? Without the camp. Watch this. You see that part when it says, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Give me the book of Matthew 27, verse 32. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 32. 
And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to pay his cross. What did they do? Him they compelled to pay his cross. That's the fit man. That's the fit man right there. Read that again. The book of Matthew chapter 27, verses 32. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to pay his cross. Go back to Leviticus 16, verse 21 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verses 21. And Aaron shall lay both his hand upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, Wait. putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And shall what? Read that last part again. And shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Now watch this. Read on. Verse 23. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited. And he shall let go the goat into the wilderness. Okay, read verse 22 one more again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verses 22. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities unto a land not inhabited. Not to a what? And he hold on unto, unto a, a land, unto a land not inhabited. Unto a land not inhabited. To a land not inhabited. Hold this. Give me the book of Luke, chapter 24. Luke 23, verse 52. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 23, verses 52. Come on. This man went unto Pilate uh -huh. and begged the body of Jesus. So this man that went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, who was that? Joseph of Arimathea. Read verse 52 again. Start verse 51. The book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 51. Come on. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them. Okay. He was Aramathia, a city of, of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. He believed on Christ. Come on. This man went, to, went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. He begged the body of Christ. Come on. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher. That was hewn in stone, Wait. wherein never man before was laid. Where in what? Never man before was laid. You see that part right there? Where in never man before was laid. Where in never man before was laid. Go back to Leviticus 16, verse 23 again. Oh, look, don't draw, don't close Luke. We're gonna go back there. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 23. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments. No, no, no. Verse which 22. he, verse 22. the book of Leviticus chapter 16, verse 22. Uh -huh. And the goats shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited. Unto a land not inhabited. Unto a land not inhabited. You see that part right there when it says unto a land not inhabited? Go back to Luke 23, verse 53 again. The book of Luke, chapter 23, verses 53. Come on. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen uh -huh. and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. Wherein never man before was laid. Unto a land not inhabited. Unto a land not inhabited. All of this is spiritual. Okay? It's all spiritual. It was all symbolic of Christ. Understand that? Go back to Leviticus 16, verse 22 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verses 22. Read. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities unto a land not inhabited. Come on. And he shall let go the goat into the wilderness. He shall let go the goat into the wilderness. 
jump down to verse 26. And he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp. You see that part right there? So now after he let go of the goat, which the goat is the scapegoat, because the scapegoat took on all the transgressions of the nation of Israel. That's what Christ did. He bore our iniquities. That's what he did. He became Christ was that scapegoat. He was the sin offering because blood needed to be spilled, okay, for the atonement. But also he took on all the transgressions of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why the scapegoat is mentioned here. So Christ became the scapegoat and he became the sin offering. You understand? That's why his blood needed to be spilled. So he became the sin offering and the scapegoat. Give me that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter 2, 24. First book of Peter's, chapter 2, verses 24. Come on. Who his own self pay our sin in his own body on the tree. Read. That we, being dead to sins, we should what? live unto righteousness. We, being dead to sins. Being dead to sins. Being dead to sins. Because guess what? The, the, the goat which the Lord's Lord fell. That was the goat that was used for the atonement. That's why it had to be killed. So that the blood can be sprinkled in the holies of all. That's why it says, we, being dead to sin, come on, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. You see that thing? By, by whose stripes ye were healed. So that's the same thing that Isaiah said in Isaiah 53. Okay? Isaiah is saying the same thing. That the apostle Peter is saying right here. Okay, go back. Leviticus 16, verse 26 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verses 26. Mm -hmm. And he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp. Now, watch this. Go back. Give me Leviticus now, chapter 16 and verse. Read Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 23 now. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 23. Come on. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. Come on. And he shall wash his flesh with the water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. Read verse 24 one, once again. Verse 24 once more again. The book of Leviticus chapter 16 verse 24. And he shall wash his flesh with the water in thy holy place, in the holy place, and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. So now watch this. You see that part when it says he's going to change his clothes, okay? It says and offer burnt offering and burnt offering for the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. After he's done, you see, he says he will wash his flesh with water in the holy place. Watch this. Give me Leviticus 16, verse 3. Let's go back. Leviticus 16, verse 3. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. And a what? And a ram for a burnt offering. So remember, he did a sin offering. Now he's doing a burnt offering now. We're using what? A ram, a ram for a burnt offering. Jump down to verse five. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And one ram for a burnt offering. So guess what? We dealt with the sin offering. Now he's doing what? He's doing what? He's doing the burnt offering. You can read about the burnt offerings in Leviticus one. Okay, go back to Leviticus 16. 
Verse 24 again. And the book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 24. And he shall wash his flesh with, with water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. Come on. And the fat of the sin offering Hold shall on. be burned upon Wait, him. wait, wait. Yeah, keep reading, keep reading. Verse 25. The book of Leviticus of 16, verse 25. And the fat of the sin offering shall you burn upon the altar. You see that thing? The fat of the sin offering is need to be burned upon the altar. So a burnt, so this sin offering is a burnt offering. Give me that in Leviticus 9 and 3. The book of Leviticus chapter 9, verse 3. And unto the children of Israel, thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year, without blemish, for a burnt offering. For a burnt offering. So this sin offering is a burnt offering. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And Moses said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar and offer thy sin offering and thy burnt offering and make an atonement for thyself and for, and for the people and offer the offering of the people and make an atonement for them as the Lord commanded. Verse 7, one more again. The book of Leviticus chapter 9 verse 7. And, Ar and Moses said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar and offer thy sin offering and thy burnt offering and make an atonement for thyself and for the people. You see that and thing? Offer. And it says, you know, it, says, it, says, it says, a sin offering and thy burnt offering. And make an atonement for thyself and for the people. That's the same thing we read in Leviticus 16. Okay? Leviticus chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. The same thing we're reading here. So the Lord keeps repeating himself over and over. Because Israel is thick. Okay, verse 7 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 9, verse 7. And Moses said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar and offer thy sin offering and thy burnt offering mm -hmm. and make an atonement for thyself and for the people. Stop right there. Offer it says, Offer thy sin offering. Because remember, we read in Leviticus 16. Here, here to get what? A bullock for the sin offering, a ram for the burnt offering. The goat for the sin offering, a ram for the burnt offering. The same thing we're reading here. Read verse 7 one more again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 9, verse 7. And Moses said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar and offer thy sin offering and thy burnt offering and make an atonement for thyself and for the people and offer the offering of the people and make an atonement for them as the Lord commanded. You see, I think the offering of the people, that's why the two goats was used. One of them was used for the sin and the other one was used for the scapegoat. Now we're going into the burnt offering, which is what the sin offering. You understand? That's what we're going over. Leviticus 16 verse 25. Forget. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verses 25. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. Wait. And he that let go of the goat. For the scapegoat, you know what? Wash his clothes. No, 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 no. That's fine. Jump down to verse 27. We already dealt with verse 26. Verse 27 now. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 27. And the bullock for the sin offering, and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make an atonement into the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their tongue. Read verse 27 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 16, verse 27. And the bullock for the sin offering. The what? And the goat for the sin. And the bullock for the sin offering. Stop right there. The bullock for the sin offering. Leviticus 16, verse 3. The book of Leviticus chapter 16, verse 3. That's the Aaron into thy holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering. You see that part right there? 
eine Ram. He says, Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering. Go back to where was that? Leviticus 16, verse 27 again. The book of Leviticus of 16, verse 27. And the bullock for the sin offering. And the goat for the sin offering. The what? Whose blood and the goat for the sin offering. And the goat for the sin offering. Leviticus 16, verse 9. We dealt with the what? The bullock. Now we're dealing with the goat for the sin offering. Leviticus 16, verse 9. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 9. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. You see that thing? And offer him for a sin offering. Go back to Leviticus 16, verse 27 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 27. And the bullock for a sin offering and the goat for the sin offering. Come on. Whose blood was brought in to make an atonement in the holy place. Stop right there. Shall one Hold carry on. forth without... Wait, wait. Whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place. Hold this. Go back to Hebrews 9, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 7. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 7. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year. Come on. Not without blood. Not what? With, not without blood. Not without blood. That's the same thing we read in Leviticus 16, verse 27. Whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place. That's why I say not without blood. Read that part again. Not without blood. Not without blood. Come on. Which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So he offered for himself. So the blood was for himself and for the errors of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So go back to where he was at. Leviticus 16 verse 27. The book of Leviticus chapter 16 verses 27. And the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make an atonement in the holy place. So it says, whose blood was brought in to, in to make atonement in the holy place. Because in the holy place, you could only go once every year. And the high priest was the one that would go into the holy place once every year. Because what day was it? The day of atonement. For himself and for the errors of the people. That's why I say, not without blood, in to make atonement in the holy place. Come on. Shall one carry forth without the camp? Shall one carry forth and they without shall... the camp? So one shall carry the blood. That was what? Remember, it says, into the holy place shall one carry forth without the camp. That's the same thing we read in Matthew 27. Okay, the 33, when Christ was taken to Golgotha. You see, that blood right there, that was the sin offering that Christ made. Uh, Romans, Romans chapter 5 and 11. For we have now received the atonement, the sacrifice. That's what this is going into. The sin offering for the bullock and for the goat is going into the sin offering that Christ made. The scapegoat, because Christ took on all our transgressions. Okay? Read verse 27 once again. The book of Leviticus chapter 16 verses 27. Read. And the bullock for the sin offering. And the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place. Come on. Shall one carry forth without the camp. Uh -huh. and, and they shall burn fire. And they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung. You see that thing? Their skin, their flesh, and their dung. Because all of that goes into what? It goes into what we used before Christ came. This is what we use before. You see the skin, the flesh, that's what he's going into because the flesh of the blood, the blood of the bulls and goats and their skins and all of that was symbolic of what? We would be covered by their, by their blood and their skin. So when Christ came, we were no longer covered by that, but the body of Christ was sufficient. Okay? That's why he has uh, spent their skin, their flesh, and their dust. Watch this. Give me 
Give me the book of Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of the bulls and of goats should take away sins. That the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Read on. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offering that was not, but a body that was prepared me. You see, but a body has thou prepared me. Come on. But a body has thou prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Thou has no has had no pleasure. You see, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou has had no pleasure, because the Lord ended that. When Christ stepped on the scene, the Lord ended that thing. When Christ died, that's when what? That's when the law of animal sacrifice was officially done at that point. Okay, but we we did it. We ended it completely when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Because even after Christ died we, and, and resurrected, we still we still continue to do the sacrifices because our forefathers they were still they were still weak in understanding Christ. That's why they was allowed to sacrifice. But when the temple was destroyed, that that it was no longer necessary anymore. There was no more sacrifices at that point because the temple was no longer standing. Okay, which Christ commanded us to say. This temple is going to be destroyed. They shall not throw left and turn because we will be the temple. Okay? Read that again, verse 6. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 6. Read. In, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. You see that thing? In burnt offerings, which we just read, and sacrifices for sin, because it was sin offerings and burnt offerings. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. The Lord didn't want that no more. That's why we had to what? Give me that in Galatians chapter 3 now. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 21. Galatians 3 verse 20, I think that is verse 23. Galatians 3 and verse 23. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verses 23. Come on. But before faith came, but before we faith came, before faith came, before Christ came, we were what? We were kept under the law. We were kept under the law. Which law? The law of animal sacrifice. That's why before he came, we were covered. Go back to the 16, verse 27. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16. Verses 27. Read. And the bullock for the sin offering, and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, mm -hmm. shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their tongue. Because we were under this law. We were covered by the, the skin, the flesh, the tongue, and all of that. All of that represented the law of animal sacrifice because. All of that was supposed to be burned on the altar of burnt offering, including the dung that needed to be burned. So what we are reading in Galatians chapter 3, verse 23, read that again. The book of Galatians chapter 3, verses 23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, mm -hmm. shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Which Christ should afterwards be revealed unto us. So before he came, we were still under the law of animal sacrifice, which goes into the skin, the flesh, and the dung. That's when we were covered by that. We were under that. That was before when Christ came. But after when Christ was revealed, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Next verse. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Come on. That we might be justified by faith. Well, that we might be justified by now the faith that we have in Christ. No longer by what? By the blood of bulls and goats. No, by the blood of Christ. That's why it says we might be justified. We might be forgiven. So this justification is talking about forgiveness. 
we might be forgiven by faith, by the faith that we have in Christ. Read verse 24 again. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Wait. That we might be justified by faith. We might be justified by faith. Come on. You know what? All that, give me Hebrews 6 and 1. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Wait. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Stop right there. Doing what? Let us leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. All this, let's go back. Go back to Galatians 3, verse 24. The book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might, might be justified by faith. You see that thing? When it says, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, because the, a principle, the schoolmaster, who's the schoolmaster? The principle. The principle is the schoolmaster. So when it says, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, what is he talking about? Go back to Galatians, Galatians 3, verse 24 again. The book of Galatians 3, verse 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So now it says the law was our schoolmaster. So the Apostle Paul comes back in Hebrew and says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, that's the works of the law. We must leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Go back to Hebrews 6 and 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Wait. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Come on. Let us go unto perfection. You see that thing? Let us Not... go. Hold on. Let us go unto perfection. Why? Because Hebrews 10 verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 10. Verses because one. Because what he's saying is that because he says, let us go unto perfection, there's a reason why he's saying, let us go unto perfection. Leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ, which is what? The schoolmaster. Let us go unto perfection. There's a reason why he's using that word there. Let us go unto perfection. Hebrews 10, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come. Wait. Really? And not the very image of the things. Come on. Can never with those sacrifices. With those sacrifices. Which they offer. So the sacrifices, which is what? The blood of the bulls and goats. Okay, that's what he's going into. Come on. With those sacrifices, which they offered year by year, continually make the comers they unto perfect. So now he says, which they offered year by year, continually. What day was this? The day of atonement. That's why it says, which they offered year by year continually. Meaning once a year, every year, we would do what? We would observe the, the day of atonement. But he could not make the commas perfect. That, that came out what? Unto the, to do the sacrifices. He didn't make us perfect. That's why it says, let us therefore go unto perfection. To live the principles doctrine of the, to, to, to live the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go unto perfection. Because the law of animal sacrifice could not make us perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Because guess what? It was still in the mind. Read the next verse. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? You see that thing? It says, for then, would they not have ceased to be offered? If it was perfect, guess what? We would have just done it once and that was it. But it says, for then, would, not, it says, for then, would they not have ceased to be offered? Wouldn't have was, should we not have stopped if this was perfect? Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 2. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? Uh -huh. Because that the worshippers once heard should have no more conscience of sins. You see that thing? No more conscience of sin. Because it was what? We were just going through the motions. We would just wait for the day of atonement to bring the animals and all of that for the sacrifices. But when it comes to the sin, the sin was still in the mind. You understand? It was still in the mind. Give me that in First Peter three twenty one. First 
First book of Peter, chapter 3, verses 21. Come on. The like figure where unto even baptism that also now save us. Really? Not, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. You see that thing? The answer, that hold on. The answer of a good conscience towards God. What is that? The laws of God. The answer of a good conscience. Because where's your conscience at? Your mind. That's why it says, as pertaining to the conscience, he didn't enter into the mind. That's why here the Apostle Peter is coming back and says, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. How do you get a good conscience towards the Most High? Guess what? You keep his commandments. You keep his commandments. Meaning what? Now, your mind, you have to now, that's, that's why the mind is where the battle is at. Your mind. That's how you get the answer of a good conscience because you're meditating upon God's law. That's how you're going to have a good conscience towards the most high. Read the answer of a good conscience towards God. Read the last part of the verse. The answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see that thing? So when, 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 when I'm explaining the scriptures, don't lose the ball because now you have to go all the way back and read the scripture again. Keep your eye on where you ended so we can continue on that. Go back to where it was at, Hebrews 10, verse 2 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 2. Come on. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Come on. Because that the worshippers once purged should had should have had no more conscience of sins. You see that thing? We should have had no more conscience of sin, but we still had it. That's why Christ was necessary so that he can what? We can now deal with the mind, the conscience. Okay? Because we were not doing that. Go back to Hebrews 6, verse 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, uh -huh. let us go unto perfection. Wait. Not again. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead. Works the dead works and, we talk about the dead works is the law of animal sacrifice. That's the dead works because it is pertained to the conscience, it couldn't make us perfect, right? Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Meaning what of a good conscience towards God. That's what he's saying, the same thing, and of faith towards God. Meaning what? A good conscience towards God. Go back to Galatians 3, verse 24. The book of Galatians 3, verse 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring to us and to Christ that we might be justified by faith. That we might be justified by faith. Meaning what? The justification we're going to get now is through what? The faith that we have in Christ. Come on. But after that, Faith is come. Meaning Christ is come. We are no longer. Christ is come now. Now we are under Christ. Watch this. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. We are no longer under the schoolmaster. Meaning what? The principalities of the doctrine of Christ. We are no longer under that no more. Now we are under the new covenant under Christ. Go back to Leviticus 16 verse 27. The book of Leviticus chapter 16. Verses 27. Read. And the bullock for the sin offering, and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung. Come on. And he that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward, he shall come into the camp. Mm -hmm. And this shall be a statute forever unto you. That in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. Mm -hmm. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Read verse 30 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 16 verse 30. 
For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Watch this. Give me Ephesians 5.25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Meaning he died for the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You see that thing? That he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That's the same thing that the priest would do. Okay, that's why he says, go back to Leviticus chapter 16, verse 30. The book of Leviticus chapter 16, verses 30. Read. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. That you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Go back to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Again. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Come on. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. A what? Not. A glorious church. A glorious church. That Christ might present it to himself a glorious church. Because the church is the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. Not having spot. Not having spot. Read. Really? Or wrinkle. Uh -huh. Or any such thing. But that it should be holy with and without blemish. That's the, that's the, the, the whole time we'll be reading without blemish, without spot and all of that. That's what Christ did. Because he was that... He was that lamb without blemish, without spot, without any wrinkle whatsoever. Because Christ, he came in, he only he only entered into the what into the holy place once. You understand? And he only did it once. He didn't have to do it many multiple times like we were doing it once every year. He only did it once and he dropped the mic. That's what he did. Read again verse 27. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, uh -huh. not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That it should be holy and without blemish. Watch this. Give me, let's go to the book of Hebrews, okay? No, no, give me John 15 verse 3. I think I can use that. John 15 verse 3, read that. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You see that thing? Now we are clean through the word that Christ spoke unto us. Because the law is spiritual. We are clean through the word. That's why it says that you may cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. The washing of water by the word. We are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Go back to Leviticus 16, verse 30. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 30. Read. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Come on. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. Come on. And the priest whom he shall anoint, and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead, shall make the atonement, and shall put on linen clothes, even the holy garments. You see that thing meaning what? All the sons of Aaron will continue to do this thing forever. Read. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation, and for the altar, and he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation. Read. And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year, mm -hmm. as did as, and 
he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Read verse 34 once again. The book of Leviticus chapter 15 verse 34. And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you mm -hmm. to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all these sins once a year and did as the Lord commanded Moses. So as the Lord commanded Moses, so it was done. Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 9, I'm sorry, read Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9 and verse, let's start at verse 9. Hebrews 9, verse 9. We're going to read down. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present. The figure for the time then present is talk about Christ. Christ was the what? The law of sacrifice, not, not, excuse me, not Christ. The law of sacrifice was the figure for the time then present. That's why it says it was a shadow of good things to come. Go ahead. Which was a figure for the time then present uh -huh. in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscious. You see that thing? That's why Aaron had to offer sin for himself for his house and for the people, right? Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. You see that thing? So this is going into the deeds of the law. The principal, the principal doctrine, the principal, the principal doctrine of Christ. That's what this is going into. The deeds of the law imposed upon us until the time of reformation, until the time of restitution, until the time of Christ. Wait. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, uh -huh. by a great and more perfect tabernacle, Wait. not made with hands, uh -huh. that is to say, not of this building, Wait. neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Read verse 12 again. You see, Christ, Christ was gangster. Read verse 12 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. Come on. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once How into many times? the holy place. He entered in once he entered into in the holy once. place. Christ entered in once into the holy place. He didn't do it multiple times. He didn't do it once every year. Mm -mm. Only once. Read that part again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, That's verses 12. 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. You see that thing? He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal. You see what Christ did? That was eternal redemption. The high priest, when they did it, it was not eternal redemption because once every year, it had to be done by the high priest. Christ being a high priest of good things to come, he only entered in once into the holy place and that what he got us eternal redemption forever. All right, jump down to verse 14. The book of Hebrews chapter nine, verses 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You see that thing? To purge your conscience because our minds needed to be purged because our minds were bad that, okay? Our minds needed to be purged. That's why, says, that's why remember, um, the skin, the flesh and the dung had, had to be carried out without the can and be burned. Guess what? That goes into our mind because our mind was bad up. That's why the Lord had to purge our conscience from dead work to serve the living God. That's why it had to be done that way. Okay, come on. And for this cause, he is the mediator of a new testament. Of the new. That he's by the, means. He, he's, okay, let me read. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, 
You see that part right there? For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Who was under the first testament? Us. We were under the first testament to redeem those that were under the first testament, the 12 tribes of Israel. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Who's called of God? Us. We are called of the most high God. So what we are reading here, guess what? What we read in Leviticus 16 was symbolic of what Christ would do, and he did it only once, forever. That's why we keep the righteousness of the law without the law, because Christ only did it once. That's what says he was the ultimate sacrifice. Okay? Let's go back. Leviticus 16, verse 34. Go back there. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 34. And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all these sins once a year. Uh -huh. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. You see that thing? So guess what? Now, we, that's why today, even unto this, we're still observing the feast. I mean, the, the day of atonement. We're still observing that. Because guess what? It was a statute forever. We're still supposed to observe the day of atonement. Because when we are observing the day of atonement, the same way the high priest used to go into the holy place to atone for himself and for all 12 tribes of Israel, today Christ is the one that does it. Christ is the one that appears before the Father in the true tabernacle that was not made with hands, which is the one that is up there, where the Most High God is. To what? To plead for us. So every year, once a year, okay, when we observe the Day of Atonement, Christ is the one, the high priest, he goes before the Most High God to plead for our cause, that the Most High God wipes the slate clean. That's some heavy stuff right there. So on the actual day of atonement, guess what? There's a court case going on where Christ is pleading for our cause, that the Lord be able to wipe our slate clean, that we start off. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's some heavy stuff. Okay, so I'm going to end this part right here. Let's go to... Genesis 3, okay? Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3 verse 1. I'm switching gears now. Genesis 3 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, he shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So now, when it says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So this serpent right here is not talking about a snake. This is a parable, okay? This is a dark face. A serpent is not making reference to a snake. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2. Let's start with verse 3. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. 2 Book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So now the Apostle Paul is rehearsing the history of Genesis. He says, as the serpent began, meaning he sees Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He's going to tell you who the serpent is that he sees Eve. Next verse. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, uh -huh. whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might to obey with him. You see that part right there? So the serpent in verse 3 is explained in verse 4. The serpent that deceived Eve is the same man that came to came and, and preached unto us another Jesus, white Jesus. That's the serpent. Okay, go back to Genesis 3, verse 1. You know what? Give me Micah. The, My, give me Micah 7, verse 16. The book of Micah, chapter 7. Verse 16, the nations shall see and be confounded at all they might. 
they shall lay their hand upon the mouth, the ears shall be deaf. Come on. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. You see that thing? So the nation, the subject matter here is about the nation. The nation. So this is a similitude. Give me that in Hosea 12 verse 10. Hosea 12 verse 10. The book of Hosea. Chapter 12 verses 10. Come on. I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So now the Lord speaks to us through parables and similitudes. Go back to Micah chapter 7, verse 16 and 17. One more again. The book of Micah chapter 7, verse 16. The nation shall see and be confounded at all they might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. Mm -hmm. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. It's because we are waking up this day. In these last days, the Lord is waking us up. So the nations, they are being, made, they are being, they are being likened to a serpent. Because the serpent was not talking about a snake. But it was talking about what? The nation. One of those nations out of the Lord, the nations that the Lord has created, is making reference to Esau particularly. That was subtle that came and taught, and taught unto us Another Jesus whom the apostles never taught. Okay, go back to Genesis 3, verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, and God said, He shall not eat of every tree of, every tree of the garden, so now the serpent, now we know who the serpent is. It says, was more subtle than any beast of the field. When it says beast of the field, it's not talking about cows and sheep and goats. No. Give me that in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men. The what? That God. Concerning the estate of the sons of men. The sons of men. So the sons of men is the subject matter. It? That God might manifest them. And that they and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. You see that thing? The Lord will manifest the sons of men that they might see that they themselves are beasts. So the beast of the field is talking about the sons of men, the other nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel. Go back to Genesis 3, verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Uh -huh. Jump down and to verse 14. On... Okay, read, read verse 14. Verses for the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and the dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. You see that thing right there? So, what we are reading here is that the Lord was going to do what? The Lord was going to um, bring forth judgment upon the serpent. He says, because the serpent, he says, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Watch this. Give me Genesis chapter 4. Give me Genesis chapter 4. This goes into Cain. Because Cain does the same spirit right there. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 2. Genesis 4 verse 2. The book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 2. And she again Bear his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So now you've got Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel. But there's other nations that the Lord has created. That's why Genesis 3 is about what? But more subtle than any beast of the field, because there was, there was more than one. It wasn't just Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel. It was more nations there. Okay? Um, 
Read verse 5 now. Because Cain was, uh, the Lord commanded Cain and Adam to bring forth what? Sacrifices. Because Adam and Eve had taught their children the law of sacrifice according to Genesis 3 to 1. So Genesis 4, the law, of the law of sacrifice is the proof that it was introduced a chapter before. Okay? Genesis 4, verse 5. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Because as part of the law of sacrifice, Cain didn't bring the right offering. He brought the wrong offering. Jump up to verse 3. Let's read verse 3. Let's see what Cain brought. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 3. And in process of time, it came to pass. And Cain brought off the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So Cain brought the fruit. He didn't bring an animal. Because when we're reading Leviticus 16, we've been reading through what? Everything that we've been reading was the type of offerings that needed to be brought. Sin offering, Ben offering, a bullock, a goat, so on and so forth. Cain didn't want to use that. He didn't go, he didn't want to go. Go, go that route. He chose a different one. He said, me, I'm going to bring lettuce, I'm going to bring cucumber, I'm going to bring banana. Okay? Jump down to verse 5 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. Next verse. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is Thy countenance fallen. So now the Lord is asking Cain, why are you mad? Why is your face look like that? Okay, because Cain was given the law by the parents. He did not follow it. So now he's mad because Abel brought the first thing of his flock, but he didn't want to do that. Okay, read on, verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, Sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So now the Lord is telling Cain, if you do well, if you do what I tell you, if you do keep my commandments and offer the right sacrifices, I'm going to accept you. Will you not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, meaning what? If you don't do what I tell you, if you don't follow my commandments, sin lieth at the door. What is sin? The breaking of God's law. Okay, because when you're breaking God's commandments, you are not serving the one true God, you are serving Satan. Okay, so the Lord is, is warning Cain to listen. If you don't do what I tell you, Satan is going to rule over you. He says, unto thee, you understand, you understand? unto Satan shall be his desire. Meaning Cain, Cain's desire would be to serve Satan, and thou shalt rule over him. Meaning Satan will rule over Cain. That's what we are reading here. Now, let's see the judgment. Jump down to verse 11. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 11. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. You see that thing? Because Cain killed his brother. So now, as far as, as part of the judgment, it says you are cursed from the earth. That one of the curses was what? Cain was a black man. When the Lord put a curse on me, one of the curses is pigmentation was taken from him. So what did he look like? Today, what the white man looks like. Okay? That's what Cain, Cain ultimately was. His skin color was cursed from the earth because the earth is like the dust of the ground. Cain's color pigmentation was taken from him. Go back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. Come on. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. You see that? Thing? And above. You, it says you are cursed above all cattle. Because jump up to verse 1, Genesis 3, verse 1. The book of Genesis 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any piece of the field which the Lord God had made. You see that thing? And he, he says he was more subtle than any piece of the field which the Lord God had made. So the beast now in verse 14 is not it's no longer saying beast, it's saying cattle. Because what? That's part of the beast, but is, is it actually making reference to the actual cattle and all that? No, it's talking about the nation. Okay, verse 14 again. 
the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. You see that thing? Watch this. Read the 15. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verses 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall and it, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So now this is going into what? The seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. The serpent is going into the white man and the seed of the of the seed of Cain, which is now going into Esau, would be what? The white people of today. The seed of the woman would be us, the 12 tribes of Israel. Read verse 15 again. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay, let's go to Genesis 25 real quick. Genesis 25 and verse 20. Let's start at verse 25. The book of Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Red. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old when she paid him. When Rebecca bare the children, okay? So now what we are reading here is, is and after that came his brother out, okay? Because Esau came out first, and after that came his brother out. So Jacob was holding the heel of Esau. So the heel of Esau was bruising Jacob's head, and Jacob's hand was bruising Esau's heel. That's what he's talking about. That's symbolic of what? Give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 6. 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 9. 2nd book of Ezra chapter you know 6. Start at, start at verse 8. Start at verse 8. Second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. You see that thing? Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. You see that thing? So Jacob was bruising the heel of Esau, and Esau was what? Was bruising the hair of Jacob. That's when Christ was bruised when he was crucified during what? During in 33 AD. Okay, come on. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. That's what that means in Genesis 3 15. Go back there, Genesis 3 verse 15. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 15. You know what? Mm. Give me that in Sarah. In Ecclesiastes chapter 40, 44. Sarah 44, verse 22. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, verses 22. With Isaac, with Isaac did he establish likewise for Abraham, his father's sake, the blessing of all men and the covenant. So now the same blessing that was given to Abraham was given to Isaac and Isaac's children who was chosen. Come on. And he made it rest upon the head of Jacob. You see that thing? He made it rest upon the head of Jacob. When Jacob, when Esau was bruising the head of, of the head of Jacob with his heel. That's why I said, and he made it rest upon the head of Jacob. Okay, that's the, during the time when Jacob and Esau was born. Wait. He acknowledged him in his blessing. Come on. And gave him an heritage. Wait. And divided his portions among the 12 tribes to depart them. That portion was what? He would inherit the kingdom and rule all nations on earth. That's the portion. Go back to Genesis 3, verse 15. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. 
it shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. Next verse. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So now this is the judgment that came upon Eve, because Eve disobeyed her husband when she went to TJ's place to the devil. That's why the Lord is bringing forth judgment on Eve. He says, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he, your husband, shall rule over thee. That goes into child labor pains, menstrual periods, and all menstrual cramps. Menstrual cramps, it goes into that because he disobeyed her husband. She was married to him, but she did not submit to that man. That's why she decided, you know what? I want to be just like my husband. I want to be equal or above him. Okay, Genesis 3, Genesis chapter 3, and verse 4. Read Genesis 3, verse 4. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Ye shall what? Ye shall not surely die. So the serpent is convincing Eve. You're not going to die. Go ahead. So God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that thing? So the serpent is telling Eve, listen, if... Okay, read that again. Genesis 3. Genesis 3, verse 16 again. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verses 16. Okay. And the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So now this is the judgment that came upon Eve. Jump back up to verse 5. Now, this is the second deceiving Eve, what we read in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. You understand? When we say the serpent, the serpent came with his faculty to deceive, to beguile Eve, that is the beguiling we're reading about now. Genesis 3, verse 4. Start at verse 4 and read down. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, He shall not surely die. Come on. For God doth know uh -huh. that in the day ye eat the off, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that thing? Because remember, Eve, Adam taught Eve. Eve was taught by Adam, but that wasn't enough. Because guess what? The serpent deceived Eve thinking, listen, you can be equal to this man. You can be equal or above him. Okay? That's why it says, you shall not surely die. You understand? Because the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Because Adam was already a god on this earth. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 1. Adam was, a, well, Adam was already on that god level. So the serpent understood, she saw, the serpent was able to see the Eve's rebellion, that he wants to be equal or above Adam. He said, okay, I'm going to exploit that thing. That's the exploitation we're reading about here. Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 1. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. She preserved the first formed father of the world. The what? That was created the first formed father of the world. The first formed father of the world. Come on. That was created alone. Adam was created first by and himself. Hold on. Adam was created first. I need you to stay with me. Okay that was created alone. Adam was created first. Before anybody else was created, Adam was created. So now, the serpent knew that. Okay? The serpent understood that thing. It wasn't a snake. The spirit of Satan didn't jump on a snake. No, that didn't happen. This was a passenger. Okay? So when it says, the first form father of the world that was created alone, give me that to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 1. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 1. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. You see that thing? The offspring of him that was first, first.
sperm made of the earth because Adam was made first. Is the Solomon 10 verse 1 again? Was the Solomon chapter 10 verse 1? She preserved the first formed father of the world. That was created alone. That was what? And put that was created alone. That was created alone. Come on. And brought him out of his fall. That's when the Lord gave Adam and Eve a way out. He said, okay, you're going to sacrifice now. That's why we said he was brought out of his fall. Adam was given a way to what? To atone for his sin. Go back to Genesis 3, verse 5 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that thing? That's the reason why. Go back to Genesis 3, verse 16 now. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. You see what happened when Eve went off? When Eve decided, you know what? I don't want to listen to my husband. He's obedient. That's, you see, the black woman today, she is exactly what Eve did back there. The reason why you sisters are getting your menstrual cramps, you have uh, child labor pains when you are pregnant, is because of what? The Lord is reminding you of your disobedience. So every month, when that time, when is that time of the month, you need to be more humble, even more, to remember what you've done in the past so you can get yourself right. Okay, because today in society, women are using that, that time of the month. No, she's on that time of the month. She's behaving like a B-I-T-T-H. Yeah, that's true. They use that as a way out to do what? To be moody, to speak like, you know, they are jumping the streets, all of that big mouth. Guess what? No, no, that's not what the Lord is saying. Because of what you've done, you need to do what? You need to use that as a way for you to get yourself right. Okay, that's why you say you shall be unseen for seven days. Seven is a number of completion. Your job is to what? Is to use that as an opportunity because that is made from the most high God as a reminder. Okay, okay, I'm gonna end the class right here. Let's break bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show to the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. Let's pray to the most high. All right.